Hello and Namaskar. Welcome to another session of BW Farhana Tidbits, where I share some of my knowledge and experience. My name is Deban Shumukerji, and today we are going to discuss BI statistics in BW Farhana. BI statistics or BW statistics has gone a sea change in BW Farhana. It has been a transformational change from what it was to what it has become. So in this video, we will look at the previous BW version BI statistics versus BW for HANA BI statistics. How is it different? What components are there in the new BI statistics and how you can use them? So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right. So now let's delve into the main topic and see how BW for HANA statistical analysis or in short called BI statistics, sometimes BW statistics has changed in BW for HANA. Well, first of all, let's understand what is BI statistics and what is the purpose. So if within BW system, you want to analyze the query runtime or you want to analyze the volume of the data in different info providers, or you want to check the usage statistics for different info providers, you want to check data load statistics, how many are failing, how many are successful. You want to check process chain statistics, so on and so forth. If you want to check all this, which is basically the administration and monitoring statistics within BW to keep your system healthy, then SAP has given the standard content, which in the past you can activate and then use it. Now that standard content is still there in BW for HANA, but the way it is delivered has completely changed. It is completely revamped and it has gone through a transformational change and we'll see today how that change looks like in BW for HANA. So statistical analysis enables us to uh, uh, use the data within BW uh, for different statistical analysis uh, like data loading, uh, statistical analysis, data volume analysis, query runtime analysis and process chain analysis. Now previously this was done using the info cubes and virtual providers where we had to activate the standard content. We had to load the data in info cubes and we had to activate the queries and then we were able to do that kind of statistical analysis. But now you don't have to do anything of that sort. No data loading required, no activation required. It is purely virtual access now. It is no more persistent. It is a pure virtual access. And now CDS views have replaced the virtual provider and the info cubes of the past. And now because of the CDS views, it is completely virtual access. So let's see how. So just for a reference, I've also given an uh, important SAP help link. If you click on that link, it will take you to the statistical analysis in BW4 HANA. You can choose your version from here. I'm on 2.0 SP4. So I will choose that and you can see that we can see statistical analysis for different subject areas, loading, volume, process chain and query runtime. So if you want to check the details for loading, you can check that for loading. What is the uh, particular CDSV? If you want to check the data volume, then you can check what is the uh, CDSV. If you want to check for query runtime, you can check the CDS views, different CDS views which are used and the different fields which are used in the CDS views for query runtime statistics. So this is a very important and handy link for you to check and see the CDS views available. Now, this is a quick comparison between what was there in the past and what has been changed. So previously, it all started with the RSDD stat tables. So that is still the same. So the tables are still the same. No change in the tables. All the tables are exactly the same. On top of the tables in the prior BW versions, we used to have data sources and then transformations which used to load the data into the info cubes. And then we had virtual info cube based on DTP, which combined the different persisted info cubes. And then we had zero TCT star queries, standard content queries, which we had to activate. And then we had to create process chain for data loading. And then after all that, we could successfully use the statistical queries to do the statistical analysis. Now it has gone completely virtual. So we have RSD stat tables. So tables are the same, no change there. We have basic ABAP CDS views, which are sitting on top of the RSD stat tables. This is not just one view. It is a hierarchy of view on top of view on top of view. And once the basic hierarchy is done, then comes the 
analytical CDS views, also called cube CDS views. So these are the CDS views with special annotation with data category cube, which generates a couple of objects. We will see in a bit what are those objects. So that is the second level, which is the cube CDS views. And on top of the cube CDS views, we had query CDS views with the uh, with the annotation uh, analytics dot query is true. So that also generates something which we will see in a moment. So those generated objects are then used in BW for HANA as it is out of the box. So you don't need to activate anything. You don't need to load any data with BW for HANA. It comes delivered and you can straight away start using it virtually without loading any data. So that is a huge change and that is a transformational change which has been uh, done in BW for HANA. And now this is how the statistics looks like. So zero TCT BI content is no longer available in BW for HANA. And the new solution is not provided by the content add-on, but it is delivered by support packages. So previously it was a part of the BI content, but now it is not a part of BI content. It comes with the support packages. So just for your reference, I've given here the following BW for HANA statistics are available. We have query runtime statistics. These are the tables. We have process change statistics. It is based on these tables. We have data loading statistics based on a bunch of tables and we have data volume statistics based on certain tables. So tables remains the same. What has changed is on top of the table. Now we have CDS views and we have cube CDS view. And finally we have query CDS view, which we will see the difference in a moment and the objects which are generated uh, from those CDS views, meaning when you activate the CDS view, it generates certain objects and those objects are actually usable by analytic manager in BW for HANA. So we'll see that. So where can you see the first question is where can we see all the available statistical content? So the place where you can see all the statistical available content is in RSRT. So if you go to the transition code RSRT and then if you press F4 and then go to info areas, there is a specific info area and under that also there is a specific specific info area uh, where you will finally find your content, which is nothing but your views, your CDS view based statistical content. So composite providers, SAP delivers a pure virtual model, meaning now it is purely virtual. It is no longer, you don't need to load the data. You don't need to um, do any activation. It is a completely virtual CDS view based model. It is based on ABAP CDS views, not HANA CDS views. So in CDS views also we have two flavors, ABAP and HANA. But please make sure you understand this, that this is purely on ABAP CDS view. Okay. The backend tables are the same. The transaction code is the same. The solution is rolled out in BW for HANA support packages rather than content add on. And starting from 7.5, you will start to see first examples or uh, the initial glimpse into these technical uh, statistical CDS views, but it is fully matured and fully available in only BW for HANA. And the uh, info area under which you can see all this is 20-BW4. So under that info area, you have uh, in RSRT, if you can see, this is one of the screenshots. This is showing you that under that info area, you will see under runtime statistics, you will see all the transient provider. These are called transient providers and this is called your queries. So these are transient provider and these are your queries. So uh, from a, um, info area BW4 HANA 2 BW4 is not visible in BW modeling tools. Meaning if you are trying to locate that info area in your project explorer, in the Eclipse, it is not available. If you try to activate it from BI content, it's not available. So only place where it is available and you can see that is RSRT F4 help. Okay. And then this is a screenshot where it is showing that if you want to create your own query on top of the transient providers, uh, which are these transient providers, then you can also do so by right clicking on any of the info providers, existing info provider, doesn't matter which one, just take any info provider, a composite provider or an ADSO, right click and say create query. And then when that new query window pops up, there you have to choose 
the search for transient provider and browse for your transient provider which will start with the name 2c and then the sql view name of the cds view name so that is the naming convention of the transient provider and then based on that transient provider you can create your own trimmed down query okay so now you have to understand the difference between cube cds view and analytic query cds view because these are the most important cds views which are used for our statistical bi content in bw for hana so we have ebab cds view of type cube also called analytical cds view so analytical and cube is one and the same thing so if you have a cds view of type analytical or cube meaning a special annotation is required then it generates something called a transient provider okay and there is another type of cds view which is called query cds view with a special annotation which we will see in a minute and that is generating the analytic query okay so that means if i go back to the diagram the transient provider with the white cube symbol is generated out of cube cds view and the query you can see here under that is generated out of query cds view query cds view uses the cube cds view uh, and is based upon the cube cds view so it builds on top of the other so query cds view uses the cube cds view okay so cube cds view what is a cube cds view cube cds view is a abap cds view with a special annotation called analytics dot data category as cube okay so when you activate a cube cds view it basically generates few objects what does it generate it generates an operational data provider for data source creation okay so it first thing it generates is operational data provider and what is the naming convention of the operational data provider the sql view name which is basically uh, generated when you uh, activate a abap cds view every abap cds view will generate a sql view so that sql view name is your operational data provider name then the second thing it uh, generates is something called a transient provider which you can see in rsrt so which is used to create user specific queries so if you want to create a new query just right click on any composite provider on any adso and just say right click new query this window will show up and then there you check this box search for transient provider and browse and then when you browse uh, you will see that if you just type few uh, letters like 2 cr v or 2 c you will see all the transient providers which are generated out of the cube cds view okay and if you want to see the cds view then you have to look at the abap project connected to bw so first you have to make sure that you create an abap project uh, connected to your bw system and then within that project you can say control shift a and then you take the name of the particular cds view and where will you get the name of the cds view from that sap help link you can see that the name of the query cds view and name of the cube cds view is given here so if you take this name rvc olap stat a cube i am at that rvc olap stat a cube you can see that the analytics data category is cube that's what generates a transient provider okay this uh, this annotation generates the transient provider and then you can see that this view is dependent on another view which will be dependent on another view so on and so forth so this cube view actually generates the transient provider and that transient provider is used to create your own query okay now comes the query cds view so this is a second type of cds view which is built on top of the cube cds view now when you activate a query cds view it generates an analytic query and that analytic query is what you saw here so if i scroll up these queries which are sh showing under the transient providers are the analytic queries which are available for you to use right away in rsrt so if you want to use the standard queries which are available now those standard queries are no more called zero tct star they are called analytic queries and they will be immediately available for usage in rsrt 
But if you don't want to use standard query, you want to create your own query, then you have to use these white cubes which depict the transient providers and on top of the transient provider, you create your own query. And where does these transient providers come into picture? Your cube CDS view generates these transient provider. Okay. So then you will have the uh, annotation for the analytic query as analytics.query is true. This is a very important annotation for the analytic query because this annotation results in the generation of analytic query when you activate this particular CDS view of type query. So this is the second type of the analytic, uh, second type of uh, CDS view and this CDS view is built upon the cube CDS view. Now this uh, CDS view generates the analytic query and that analytic query you can see in RSRT if you see expand as I told you in RSRT you can directly use the analytic queries and the way you will use the analytic queries is that is that uh, uh, you what you will do is you will go to RSRT you will press F4 and the moment you press F4 what you have to do is you have to go into the info area which is called 20-BW4 and then when you go there you will expand that you will see another info area which is called data management runtime under that runtime statistics and under that you will see all the standard transient provider and if you will expand that transient provider you will see the analytic query so that's how it is uh, organized and that's how it is configured there you go so if you expand that one of the uh, transient provider if you see one of the transient providers if you expand you will see that we have one standard query which is given by SAP and I have created a custom query which is based on this uh, transient provider which is also there so that transient uh, that analytic query in RSRT you can directly use it so I'm using the first one which is a standard one and once you click execute immediately without any activation without any loading of data you will have your query runtime statistics there with you okay then uh, I just wanted to show you that the relationship between the analytic manager and the CDS view so you have the SQL engine you have the NetWeaver data manager and you have the NetWeaver analytic manager so we have different CDS views we have basic we have the cube and we have the query so different um, components within PW can read different types of CDS view so your analytical manager which is uh, your top level can read your query CDS view. that's why in RSRT immediately you can start using them then you have a data manager which can use your CDS view of type cube and then it can also uh, using ODP technology it can create a data source based on this and then that data source you can use to load it into open hub and that open up can send the data outside to third party if required the naming convention of the query uh, the analytic query will be 2c and the sql view name similarly the naming convention of the transient provider will be 2c and the sql view name of the cds view okay so summary what are the three usages of bw statistics in bw for hana so we can have three usages one is you can directly use the sap given standard queries their name will be 2crv and then with q they are based on query CDS view with, with the annotation analytics query true. They are referred to as analytic query and these are treated as transient BW query which can be consumed by AO, it can be consumed by Lumira or it can be consumed by SAP Analytics Cloud. So these analytic queries which are generated out of the query CDS views are directly accessible in RSRT, directly accessible by AO, by Lumira or SAC. The second usage is you don't want the standard SAP queries say for example you, you saw that oh there are 50 fields I don't need 50 fields for my reporting I just need 15 fields out of them. Then you don't go for analytic queries you go for transient providers and you create your own queries based on the transient providers. These transient providers are generated when you activate the cube CDS view which has the annotation analytics.data category as cube. So these are the two usage when you want either a standard as it is SAP given a query you want to use or you want to create your own query these two will keep things virtual it is all virtual and you don't have to load any data the third usage is you want to actually create a data source extract the data and then send it to third party in that case what you have to do is as apparent in the screenshot 
First thing is you have to make sure you have a source system of type ODP CDS. And then within that you should have a source system of type uh, BW self because right now we are dealing with the CDS view within the BW system. So there should be a self BW system within the ODP CDS. And once you have that, then you can create a data source which will be based on the operational data provider. Remember, I told you that Cube CDS view when it gets activated, it not only generates the transient provider, but it also generates the operational data provider. And that operational data provider you can use. This is nothing but the SQL view name. So you can use that and the data source you can use and while that data source uh, sorry via the data source you can create transformation load it into open hub and send it to third party so naming convention as we discussed it will transient provider naming convention will be 2c and the sql view name this is the cds view name uh, this is the C abap uh, cds view name uh, for the sql view so this is the sql view transient provider if you see the sql view name is this Transient provider just added a 2C in front and that's your transient provider name and this is the query uh, CDS view name and then the SQL view name for the query CDS view. Again the analytic query will be 2C and then the SQL view name of the CDS view of type query and then there is another example. So query CDS view builds upon the analytic or cube CDS view. So transient provider naming convention 2C SQL view, analytic query naming convention 2C SQL view. So these are the two different types of CDS view. Cube CDS view generates transient provider and operational data provider and your query CDS view will generate your analytic query. And then finally I just wanted to give you some handy tables. There are two important tables you should know DDL source name and uh, you will have your Mm, sorry, the DDL dependency first table name and the second one is RS ODP ABAP CDS view. Both can give you the relationship between the SQL view and the CDS view. If you know the name of one, you can easily find out the other, so on and so forth. And you can also find out the name of the actual object, the CDS view. So uh, DDL source file name, your actual CDS view name and your SQL view name, everything is available in this particular table, RS ODP ABAP CDS view. So you can use this. To easily do the lineage. Thank you very much for listening in. I really hope this helped you understand the new BW statistics paradigm, how it has changed, how it has become purely virtual and how you can use it for three different usage scenarios. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.